Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Covert and I'm so pleased to bring you another edition of our Symphoria Community Spotlight. Today I'm sitting down with Marla Burns who is the chapter president of the local NAMI chapter which stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness. Um, Marla, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Mm, and we're so excited to talk with you about this because we thought in light of our upcoming masquerade concert, which is all about the masks that we wear, the masks that we choose to wear, the masks that we feel we have to wear, um, we thought it was a really great time to shine the spotlight on, you know, this idea that we want to take away the stigma that comes with mental illness and really um, understand how to support the people in our lives who struggle with that and to support the people who are supporting the people who are doing that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what NAMI is? Well, Kelly, NAMI is a grassroots effort. Um, it's a national organization, but local chapters, um, we've been around since 1981. And uh, it's, it started because families um, were frightened and were alone and confused. And at that point, the psychiatric community was blaming families for their loved one's illness. And people kind of got mad about that and said, wait a minute, you know, if I've got seven kids and one has schizophrenia, how can it be that I caused it? Mm -hmm. So they started challenging the system and challenging some of those old theories and, um, and families started joining together to kind of air their grievances and air their support to one another. And, and it became this national movement for more research into mental illness, more monies to go, um, insurance parity, that mental illness is just like any other illness. It affects the brain and the brain is, is a physical part of us and um, our insurance should cover for mental health treatment. Um, so families started advocating not only for themselves, but for others. And by doing that, they kind of opened the door um, so that other people could join in and, and ask questions and, and find support and care. Um, because the worst thing is, you know, to face this alone, whether you're the person with a mental illness or the family who's trying to be there to support their loved ones. You don't want to be alone on this journey. It's it is frightening. It is confusing. It's difficult to find the resources for treatment um, and guidance. So that's what NAMI is about. It's families and persons who've recovered from mental illness who are supporting each other and supporting new people on this journey. So we have our support groups. We do a lot of education. We offer free educational classes, what they call family to family programs to give people information about what mental illnesses are, what treatments are available, how to get help. Um, there's peer-to-peer, -peer, which again, that's people who've recovered, who are helping other folks who are on this journey to see that there is hope. These are treatable illnesses. Um, we have Homefront, which is a program for veterans and their families who are experiencing mental illness. And then we do a program for schools, Ending the Silence, where um, a person in recovery from mental illness and a, uh, and a co-leader um, talk to middle school and high school students about mental illness and why it's important um, to get help and to talk about it and to have a trusted adult that they can turn to. And these programs have reached many people. Before COVID, we, <laughs> before COVID, we reached like 900 high school and middle school students in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, um, talking to young people is, is so encouraging because they are a lot more open about talking about their feelings and what they're experiencing. And um, it just, it gives me a lot of hope that we are breaking down those barriers of stigma and shame associated with um, admitting that you've experienced a mental illness or that someone in your family is struggling. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that idea of that stigma and shame, that is sort of, you know, what I was thinking coming into this interview causes people to feel like they have to wear a mask, so to speak, to, to hide who they really are and what they're really going through. And, you know, I, 
I wonder what can we do, like as individuals, what can we do to bring more awareness to mental health issues and how can we help people understand and feel safe enough so they don't have to wear that mask? Well, I think one of the biggest uh, things has been personal testimony. Um, a lot more celebrities now are coming out about their experience with a mental illness or a loved one's experience with mental illness. And that's something that we cover a lot with the students in school is some of the celebrities that have come forth, you know, that, you know, somebody can be a great football player, but you know what, he can also experience anxiety and depression. Um, someone can be a very successful singer, but guess what, they've experienced an eating disorder and had to struggle with that. So celebrities coming out, but also the personal stories. That's why it's so powerful when we go into schools and you have a young adult who's saying, you know what, when I was in high school, I was thinking of killing myself and I didn't know who to turn to. And my mother was freaked out when I, when I told her, but you don't have to be. There's counselors here at the school that can help you. Your health teacher is here and wants to support you. So there are people who understand. Um, so those personal testimonies where someone shares their vulnerability gives courage to others to share their vulnerability because it is, it's really hard. People are still worried about repercussions if in the workplace to share, you know, the fact that, you know, well, yeah, I was just out for two weeks because I was dealing with my depression. People are still leery about that because they're afraid people are going to look at them differently. Um, we have to also address um, kind of bullying tactics or, or pejorative language. You know, if somebody goes, oh, yeah, well, you know, that, that person over there, you know, she's just kind of crazy. You know, that, to address that and say, what? What, what, are you, what are you saying? You know, I mean, we, we have to be more open about addressing bias and, and prejudice, mm -hmm. whether it's against persons of color, whether it's against gay lesbian, whether it's against persons with mental illness, we as a society have to be more assertive about not accepting language that tears someone else down. And that's part of then removing the stigma so people don't have to wear that mask to hide who they are and what they've struggled with. Because what I've known and what I've been blessed with, I worked 30 years as a psychiatric nurse, and I will tell you the finest people that I've ever met have been people who have struggled and overcome such hardship and such difficulties and, and faced their mental illness and gotten treatment and then reached out and helped others. And I, I'll tell you, I just, I've been blessed to know so many people who, yes, maybe they had a mental illness, but they had so many gifts along with that, the compassion and empathy for others because they had suffered themselves. And that's what part of our support groups are. It's families who are sharing their heart and their vulnerability and their graciousness with others who are struggling. And the same with our peer groups people who don't want someone else to have such a hard road. And so they're willing to share with others what they've gone through and to reach out to help them and extend a hand. And that helps tear down those walls, tear down those masks so that we can be human <laughs> one to another, one heart mm -hmm. to another. And, and what a lovely, what a lovely, world to live in right it, when we when we can do that and i really believe that you know if each of us takes that stand and says no we're not going to tolerate that language that um stigmatizes and you know all of these things then we can really come together and and do good in our world and you know um as people are watching this i'm sure that some people will be very interested in understanding um how they can get involved with NAMI or how they could um, refer someone that they know who might be um, looking to participate in some of your peer or your family support groups. So what would you say to them? Well, um, we do have a, a web page, NAMISyracuse.org. We have a Facebook page, NAMI Syracuse. And then we have an office um, 
that we ha have open Monday through Friday to answer questions for people, give referrals to folks, and just to listen sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 315-487-2085. Um, and a lot of our referrals are um, word of mouth that, you know, somebody has confided in their neighbor or their friend or their sister, and they know, are aware of us so that they refer people. And we are getting more referrals from clinicians who re realize that if you get families supported and you get the person who's experiencing mental illness peer support, that that's helpful to their recovery. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that's that's what this is about, is that people getting better, feeling better, doing better, um, because these illnesses are manageable and are treatable. Mm -hmm. Well, I will um, put all of that information in the post. So those of you who are watching will have links and phone numbers right there. And Marla, I just want to say thank you to you and to NAMI for all of that you are doing to support um, those with mental illness and those caring for people with mental illness in central New York. We're so grateful for an organization like NAMI um, to do that so we can be our true selves with all of the people around us. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And for all of you watching, thank you for being here today. And we look forward to seeing you at our next concert, our Spark Masquerade concert on October 10th at 7 p.m. So you can get your tickets at experiencesymphoria.org. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful week.